Well, this is problem 2.7 out of Griffith's Quantum Mechanics textbook. Before I get into the problem, if you wouldn't mind please liking the video and subscribing to my channel. It helps me grow the channel, which is something I'm trying to do, so I'd greatly appreciate it. So for problem 2.7, we have a particle in an infinite square well, and we're given an initial wave function at t equals zero of that. And they have us do a whole bunch of things. So this is continuing with our infinite square well um, problems. That was the one we did. We did a problem last time with that. And these equations will be useful. I guess the first thing worth doing is to find our constant a. And we've done this a million times, so I'll kind of go through this quickly. But essentially, we'll have our a squared here, and then our integral. If you've seen the previous problems, then surely you're fine with this. Um, we'll integrate from 0 to a over 2 of x squared dx plus the integral from a over 2 to a, a minus x squared dx. Nothing crazy here. You just evaluate these integrals and then solve for a. Um, I think for the sake of time, I'll just tell you that a is 2 root 3 over a cubed square root. All you have to do is work out the integral and solve for a. If that's something you're struggling with, let me know, and I'll do that in a different video. But, oh, and we also have to graph. But uh, I'm going to try to move a little bit faster here. And graphing, again, is also pretty straightforward. You can see that this is just a line. And this is also a line, but with a negative slope. So this is nothing too crazy. You have something like this. And then a negative slope. And that change, of course, happens at a over 2. And then if you wanted to find this point, of course, you could just set uh, 0 equals AA minus AX. And if you wanted to find what X equals, well, then X must equal A. Okay, so this happens at the point A. Okay? You could even find this point if you wanted to, which might have some purpose, but that's essentially what your graph ends up looking like. Part B, now we want to find our full wave function, psi, as a function of both x and t. So, so the way that we're going to do this is we're actually going to use, well, this was actually in the last section. We saw how we could write our psi, which is equation 2.17, and then by doing a Fourier transform, we can find these constants, these weighted constants, C sub n. So if you're curious how you get there, they do work through it in the book. It's something I could do a video on in the future, but for the sake of solving the problem, I'm going to utilize the equations that they gave us. So what we need to find is our C sub n, and we obviously know what that is. That's given in the problem. And then with our C sub n, we'll know our uh, complete wave function. So C sub n it's a bit of a monster here, but we'll have 2 over a square root. The integral, I'm just going to write it as one integral to begin with. We have our sine function, of course. Sine of n pi over a x. And, well, it, it'll be easier actually to write it like this, I would imagine. Um... Let's use the lasso tool here. Preemptively, I could factor out some constants. Um, so let's see, what do we have? You stay there. We will have an A term that comes with this, so I can factor out just A. Um, so for our first part, from 0 to A over 2, it's just x. So we'll do x dx. I can move this a little closer. Plus, oops, 
plus, and now we have the other integral from a over 2 to a. And the main difference here is this will have, it'll still have our sine function, but it'll have the, what was it, a minus x? Yeah. dx. Okay. So we can plug in what we know a to be. Um, I think I'm going to just keep it as a for right now. And then essentially all you're going to have to really do is integrate this by parts. And then over here, you'll break this up into two separate integrals. The a is a constant, that can be factored out. And then minus x sine of, uh, not sine of x, sine of n pi x over a dx. So this one is a very easy one. You can just do a u sub here. And then this one will follow the same method as this integral. The only difference is your bounds of integration are a little different. And there's a negative sign out front. So there's a few ways you could do that. You could do integration by parts. You would definitely let u equal x, dv equal dx, so that du equals dx. And then, of course, you can integrate those at a over n pi. I think it's a negative. And then you can do uv minus the integral of v du. So you can do that. You can also plug this into a computer if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to work out the integral. If somebody specifically wants me to, I can. But I'm going to assume that you're OK with calculus at this point. So with that in mind, what you end up getting is c sub n is 4 times the square root of 6 over n pi squared times sine of n pi over 2. So you'll notice that this is equal to, well, if you let n be an even number, then that'll be numbers like pi over 2, um, two you know, you're going to have some factor of pi over 2. So that's going to be 0 if even, or I'm sorry, if it's even, it'll be um, pi, because you'll have 2 over 2, you'll have pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, what have you. You're going to have some um, factor of pi, so sine of pi or 2 pi or 3 pi is going to be 0. And if n is even, then you'll have a factor of pi over 2, what have you. So you'll essentially just have, um, I'll write it down here, your amplitude. And then it's going to alternate signs depending on what value of n you have. So this will be a plus or minus. Okay, so that's C sub n. Now then, it should be pretty straightforward to find our psi because all we have to do um, is plug it into our equation, which let me check in the book to make sure I have it written down correctly. Okay, so I didn't write it down actually here, so I need to write it down now. So our entire wave function I thought I wrote it down, but I didn't, is the summation n equals 1 to infinity c sub n 
2 over a square root sine of n pi over a x. And then we also need to add, of course, the time dependence part, which is e to the minus i n squared pi squared h bar divided by 2m a squared all times t. So then all you have to do at this point is plug what we just found into here and then also make note that this sum, every even term, it's zero. So you can actually write this as the sum of one, three, five, and so on. You really don't have to count the even terms since they're going to be zero anyways. Okay, so that's, I think, pretty straightforward. C is also... C is asking for the probability. So the probability is related to those constants that we just found. Also another good reason to find it. So it's just if we look at our C, which we have here, for n equal 1, and that times its complex conjugate, which is just that, is going to be equal to 16 times 6 over 1 squared pi squared which is about 0.99 or 99%. So the probability that a measurement of energy would yield E1 is 100%. Your ground state, or not 100%, I'm sorry, 95%, I believe it was, 99%. So there's a 99% chance that you measure the ground state. Okay, and now for part D, we need to find the expectation value of energy using equation 2.21, uh, which again, I'm glad I have with me here. So the expectation value, I have, oops, sorry for that, I lost the equation for a moment, but here it is. So this is equation 2.21, just found it here handy. And we already know what C sub n is, that's going to be 96... So that's going to be that uh, n to the n squared, so n to the fourth, pi to the fourth as well, times the energy for this, which is going to be n squared, pi squared, n squared, h bar squared over 2m a squared. And then the summation, of course. Most of this stuff being complete constants. So we can write this as 96 pi squared. We can see that this will cancel. That stuff's a little important. Uh, 96 pi squared, h bar squared, over pi to the fourth to m a squared. And then we essentially have the summation we have the summation from n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over n squared. And I should actually mention this is only odd that we need to count up. And this is actually a series which is known. So this series is pi squared over 8. That's what it converges to. So we have the expectation value of our Hamiltonian as 96 pi squared h bar squared over 2 pi to the fourth and a squared times pi squared over 8. So you can see that the pi's actually all end up dropping. And then we have 96 divided by 16, which is just 6. So we have 6 h bar squared over m a squared. And that's the expectation value of your energy.
the expectation value of your Hamiltonian dependent on the mass and the how big the infinite square well is. So a lot of problems here. Um, of course, we had to find A we had to be able to graph what we have. That was pretty normal. Part B, we had to find our C sub n, which was a little new. But again, you'll find that it's really just integrating. And once we found our C sub n, we could find our wave function. We then also used our C sub n, in this case C sub 1, to find our probability. And we also used it to find the expectation value of our Hamiltonian. So hopefully that makes sense. If it did, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you prefer me to do more of the math, you can let me know. Um, if you like the pace the way it is, you can tell me that too. And I will continue to make more videos.